Welcome to Stories from the Museum of the Rockies Photo Archive. This is Steve Jackson, Curator of Art and Photography. The Museum of the Rockies Photo Archive is a preservation and research collection of historical photography from the Northern Rockies region of Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. The archive collects and preserves photography from the late 1860s to the 1980s documenting the people, places, industry, and events of the region. The photo archive contains over 60,000 photographs, including the complete archives of several local and regional photographers. Back in 1972, the Bozeman family discovered a collection of photographic negatives in the basement of their home. Realizing the significance of the collection, they donated it to the Museum of the Rockies. During the process of cataloging the collection, the museum discovered that the photographic negatives were by James Campbell Whittem. James Campbell Whittem was born May 11, 1988, in Fairfield, Iowa. In 1911, Whittem graduated from the Agricultural College of Forestry in Ames, Iowa. Following his graduation, Whittem was hired as an assistant supervisor for the newly created Beartooth National Forest in Billings, Montana. In his early years with the Forest Service, Whittem worked on a topographical survey of the Beartooth Mountains. Whittem and a small survey crew were tasked with completing a survey started in 1898, exploring and mapping the valleys, peaks, and high alpine plateaus via pack horses and physical hiking and climbing. During the course of his survey work, James successfully climbed many of the highest peaks in the Beartooth, but one mountaintop, Granite Peak, eluded his efforts. With an elevation of 12,807 feet, Granite Peak is the highest point in Montana. There had been several attempts to make the first descent of Granite Peak, the earliest being an attempt to climb it in 1889. Another attempt was made in 1910 by Fred and Abnett of Billings, Montana. In August of 1914, James Whittem organized an attempt to climb Granite Peak. Approaching their objective from the north via Mount Tempest, the climbing party had to abandon their efforts after reaching an elevation of 12,200 feet. Undeterred by two previous unsuccessful attempts, the Nabnet began plans to organize another expedition to climb the peak in August of 1923. The Nabnet's 1923 party included Billings residents Harold Rickson, W. H. Banfill, George Austin, and Vern Johnson. When the Nabnet discovered an attempt to climb the mountain was also being planned by three Forest Service supervisors, James Whittam, supervisor of the Custer National Forest, R.T. Ferguson, supervisor of the Beartooth National Forest, and Ellers Koch, assistant regional forester in Missoula. It was decided that the two parties should join forces. The combined climbing parties left East Rosebud Chalet on the morning of August 27th. Their approach to the mountain followed the Slough Creek Trail, branching off on an unmarked trail that climbed the side of Mount Fairview. They made camp the first night at Timberline at the head of Slough Creek. The following day, leaving their pack horses with their packer, the group proceeded on foot following a route that led up through Froze to Death Pass and along the rim of Phantom Creek Canyon, reaching the summit of Mount Tempest at noon. The party then descended the ridgeline between Tempest and Granite Peak, dropping 1,800 feet to their campsite at Avalanche Lake on the east side of Granite Peak. During a discussion around the campfire that evening, it was decided that the two parties would attempt to climb the mountain from two different routes. Fred and Abnett's party would attempt to climb the mountain from the southwest side, while Koch, Ferguson, and Whittem would attempt to climb the northeast ridge. The climbers set off the next morning at daybreak, Koch, Ferguson, and Whittem climbing the 1,400 feet from Avalanche Lake to the northeast ridge line. 
Following the ridge, the climbing consisted of steep scrambling until at approximately 9 a.m. they reached the snowfield notch in the ridge about 800 feet below the summit, known today as the Snow Bridge. Here the route finding and climbing became more difficult. Unable to continue directly up the ridge line, the climbers followed a route off the south side of the ridge. Slow progress was made working back and forth to the south and north of the ridge until they reached a steep face about 300 feet below the summit. Seeing three possible routes up the barrier, each was tried in turn without success. James Whittam writes, It began to look as if another attempt at old granite was doomed to failure, as we were now confronted with an uninterrupted extension of the same series of cliffs and broken walls of granite that had been the undoing of so many expeditions in the past. A solution was found by angling left via a chimney towards the south face, where a ledge was discovered leading back to the ridge line. Once again another steep cliff confronted them. This time they found that the only feasible route led out to the right onto the precipitous north face. James Whittam writes, A crevice led out across the steep slope for several rods, then dwindled into a mere crack in the rocks, only big enough for short toe holds. Here the most dangerous part of the entire trip was encountered, where a slip meant a drop of 1,500 feet to the granite glacier below. The climbers continued to encounter difficult route finding and climbing until they emerged from the last steep rock chimney, where relatively easy climbing led to the top. At this point, within sight of their goal, the climbers halted to discuss who should be the first to stand on the summit. Koch and Whittam felt that Ferguson, the supervisor of the Beartooth National Forest, should have the privilege of being the first human to stand upon the monarch of the forest. Ferguson steadfastly refused, and the matter finally had to be compromised by the trio walking arm in arm to the top. The summit of Granite Peak was reached at 11.10 a.m. August 29, 1923. The party remained on top for two hours, building a rock cairn to support the stars and stripes fastened to an eight-foot hardwood staff and chiseling their names into the summit rocks. An effort was made to call out to the other climbing party, but they could not see or hear any sign of them on the south side of the mountain. With a thunderstorm beginning to build in the west, the party began their descent, following rock cairns they had placed along the climbing route. Arriving safely back at their avalanche lake camp at 5.30 p.m., they learned that the second party had reached a high point a mere 200 feet below the summit before they were forced to turn back. News of their successful climb was heralded by several Montana newspapers, and each climber would later chronicle the climb. James Whittam, in his article Planting Old Glory on the Dome of Montana in 1923, R.T. Ferguson, in a 1927 article, and Ellers Koch, in his 1998 book Forty Years a Forester. Today, Granite Peak in Montana is considered one of the most difficult of the 50 state high points. More images from the museum's Whittam collection featuring James Whittam's career in the Forest Service go to www.morphotoarchive.org. Stay tuned for more stories from the Museum of the Rockies Photo Archive. This is Steve Jackson saying so long.